Hey everyone, it's Gina with Pretty Big Central Fleet County and we decided this year that instead of doing an in-person pollinator day for September, um, we would it would be better suited to do some videos and post online for everyone that's getting ready to, uh, you know, plan some maybe fall gardening and then save our resources so that we can do an amazing in-person pollinator day on April 2022. So enjoy these videos for the week um, and hopefully we can help you do some more pollinator gardening. This is a pollinator garden that's a, called a wet foot garden. One of the Sunnyside Master Gardeners, Mary Lee Burnside, has this on her property because she has this low spot. So in order to kind of absorb the water and stuff, we walk up this way so you can see where it dips there. You can kind of see where the grass kind of dips down and then it comes to that tree and then it it levels back out. So to absorb some of that water, she planted a kind of a, a pollinator garden. It's got lots of amazing things in it. This tall plant right here that's getting ready to bloom. This one right here is a bone set. Uh, it's great for all pollinators. There was actually a swallowtail hanging out earlier. We have some great blue lobelia here. There's um, a sunflower. It'll be ready to bloom later this fall. We have um, a wild aster. Then we have some rutabecchia and some different mints growing here. And mints, you can always tell, have a square stem. Um, even though there's not a lot happening here, there's still some bumblebees working what little flowers are left here. Um, if you do plant mints, either plant it in an area that you don't mind if they go a little crazy, um, or plant them in a pot, a plastic pot, and sink that pot in the ground. You can see that there are some zinnias in this garden, and while they're not perennials, they are a great nectar source for um, butterflies. They can sit there and take a rest while they're getting their nectar. It's kind of hidden here, but here's a, a hibiscus. You know, beautiful large flower, easy for pollinators to find. Um, we have some Coreopsis over here. Again, lots of lots of color and stuff, and you can see this is just a great mix of plants and a great way to to really transform an area that maybe is difficult to mow, um, especially when we get all those rains. And then she also has a. Um, ornamental grass, a native ornamental grass called Indian grass here. And she said last year what was really nice about having this grass out here was the monarch caterpillars that were on the milkweed out here came over here and were able to lay their chrysalis um, and, and form their chrysalis on this grass. So it really, um, A, it's a native, but B, it served that other purpose of providing a place for the monarch caterpillars to um, transform. So if you have a place that maybe it's a little wetter, you can think about doing something like this um, wet foot garden to really create habitat for the pollinators. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to Purdue Extension Floyd County um, or shoot me an email at gmanders at purdue.edu. Thanks.